Hey guys, hello everyone, and a very warm welcome back to my channel. So, in today's video, uh, we'll be starting up as I told you that we'll be starting up with our arithmetic series. And since we were not able to make video for the longest time because of certain issues with my laptop, which I have fixed now, so most probably we will be working out fine now. Okay, so I'll be doing the arithmetic, I'll be starting again with the arithmetic part which we have been doing, and we'll be starting from the very, very beginning. Okay. So before that, a very warm welcome of you all to my channel, Studying Studies. So uh, today's video is going to be first of all starting out with the basic part, and the basic includes I think the most important thing that you need to be including would be <coughs> percentages for sure. Okay, and for that I think first of all you all should know certain percentages which are there okay so i'll just start with that part only so that we'll be having a good beginning okay so i'll be going up with what are the different percentages you should okay so percentages is like a base if you know this part so you'll be able to do and solve many questions okay so my profession would be your ssc oriented banking oriented and uh, you know all the other government exam basically other government and bank examples okay so you can use this thing for uh, any example which asks this topic okay so whenever i'm talking about percentages so there are certain important percentages that you guys should know okay so first one being one by two we all know this is what this is 50 percent okay then second one is one by three which is what 33.33 percent okay or you can write it as 33 one by three percent Okay, either way possible. Then we have 1 by 4, which is commonly known as 25%. Then we have 1 by 5, which is commonly known as 20%. Okay, these are the ones that you have to remember. These are the most important ones that are asked in the exam. Then we have 1 by 6. Okay, so 1 by 6 is being remembered as 16, 2 by 3 percent and mostly i'll be going up with the fractions part because the thing is that fractions are the most important in the exams okay then we have one by seven which is sorry one by seven which is 14 uh, 14 yeah two by seven percent okay then we have one by eight which is what one by eight is 12 one by two percent okay then we have one by nine which is 11 one by nine percent then we have 1 by 10, which is equal to 10%. Then we have 1 by 11, which is equal to 9, 1 by 11%. Okay. And then we have 1 by 12, which is equal to 8. Uh, 1 by 12 is 8, 1 by 3%. Okay. Then we have 1 by, what else you need to remember? 1 by 20, which is equal to what? which is equal to 1 by, sorry, 1 by 20, which is equal to 5%, and uh, 1 by 25, which is equal to 4%. Okay, then we have other important like 3 by 8. Okay, so 3 by 8 is what? 37, 1 by 2%. Give me a second. Okay, uh, 37, 1 by 2%, then we have 4 by 7. What is 4 by 7? Which is equal to 57, 1 by 7%. Okay, so these are the important fractions that you should be noting for sure if you haven't noted it yet. Okay, and yeah, if you know these, so I think 50% of the question will be solved. And the remaining 50% I am going to tell you how, how to be solved. Okay, so I will be giving you all the different types of questions that will be asked. Okay, and uh, I will be labeling my video as arithmetic practice series. Okay, and I'll also label the major part which we would be covering in that particular video okay what are the parts that I did. so we'll be including the major parts that the video will be covering and mostly I'll keep my video in English so that it reaches a wider audience okay give me a second guys okay mm, what else okay so I'll now begin with the question where you'll be applying this particular Okay, so we'll be starting up first with the basic one. So I'll be starting up with the basic question and then we'll be moving eventually forward towards the advanced questions. Okay, so a very easy question that round salary is 16 2 by 3 percent less than Radha. Okay, 
so you have to read the statements very carefully and writing it okay by how much percent does rather salary more than ram so how much percent is rather salary more than ram this is what you have to tell okay so i'll tell you how do you do this okay so this is a very basic question first of all you have to pick up the fraction so what is this fraction this fraction is 1 by 6 as we have studied just right now okay so what do we consider is the base or the denominator is being considered as what is the salary of radha and this is what is considered like if you do 6 minus 1 you will get 5 so 5 would be salary of ram so if i write it like this ram versus radha and if radha's salary is 6 and ram's salary is 5 then how much more is radha is a uh, radha's salary how much is more than ram so radha's salary is one more than ram's salary so it would give you what it would give you 20% okay i hope you understood this very well okay um so this is the first question then the next question what is the next question um i'm not going to doing i'm not going to be doing you know particular types again and again because we have to save time and yet we have to do like all the types so what i'll be doing is i'll do one to two questions per type and i might give you some questions in between so that you can practice and you may be able to understand a particular uh, type properly okay and we will keep on moving so what i did here is what is called as ratio if i put like this so it would also give the ratio or the salary could be in the ratio of 50 60 or you know 500 or 600 but eventually when you cancel out you will get y ratio 6 so this is the basic ratio in which the salary is divided okay and also i'll be teaching you proper ratio and proportion questions in the ratio and proportion chapter which i'll be taking very soon because that is a very basic chapter and that needs to be taught before we do anything advanced okay so i'll do that as well take another page and let me write at the rate sudhi Studies by day, and in the channel you guys can subscribe if you like the content. Okay, and I have to write this in order to avoid any kind of infringement of my content. Okay, so um, okay, now let's do another question. Okay, this is a very interesting one, and it is kind of a <clears throat> question which requires you to put in your brains. Okay, so in a train there are I am writing the major parts here. Okay, just. Okay, so I'll be writing the major parts here. Okay, so there are as many wagons. There are as many wagons as there are number of seats. Okay, as there are number of seats. So this is the situation. Okay, in each wagon. That means each wagon. Carries the number of a particular number of seats would be equal to the number of total wagons. Like if it carries n number of seats, then there would be n number of wagons. Okay. Now, in one wagon, in one wagon, one wagon, one wagon carries sixteen person. Okay, sixteen persons, but sixteen person necessarily doesn't mean sixteen seats. Okay. and you have to read it afterwards it is fulfilled yeah it is you write filled it is filled by the capacity of 57 1 by 7% so here you need to know this fraction what was this fraction i'll take you back here so what is this this is the fraction this is what 4 by 7 okay so we'll just apply it here so uh, let me come take you back to the question Okay, so fifteen one by seven percent is how much it is full. So it is not fully full. Okay, you have to find the find the maximum number of passengers number of passengers. Why I am giving the time to write the whole question just so that you can understand because this is a tricky one. Okay, so then um that that can be accommodated. Accommodated if it has minimum if it has minimum of twenty five percent seats always vacant. 
Now you can see the language is very typical, so I had to write okay, but I'm not going to do this for every question. We'll be writing for the question which needs special attention. Okay, so here if you read the question correctly, so there are as many wagons as there are number of seats in each wagon. This I've explained to you by taking a number n. Okay, then what if one of the wagon it carries 16 persons and it is filled by the capacity of 15 1 by 7 percent and the maximum number of passengers that can be accommodated uh, if it has minimum of 25 percent seats already vacant. So if it is 100 percent, so 25 needs to be vacant, that means 75 percent would be filled. Okay, so <clears throat> 75 would be filled. Now you have to what you have to understand is first pick up the fraction. Okay, so persons sitting if I have 57 1 by 7 percent. So this is equal to 4 by 7, right? So that means total number of seats would be 7 and out of it, 4 would be taken up by uh, uh, passengers. And uh, it says that 16 is taken instead of 4, 16 is taken. So we know that it is into 4 times. That means total number of seats would also be 4 times. So it would be total of 28 seats. Okay, that would be there. Okay. So, we know that if there are, what is the total number of seats is 28, that means wagons would also be 28, okay. Then you have to find that the whole train can accommodate how many. So, you have to see here that what would be the total number of seats in the whole train, okay. So, we know that there are how much wagons, 28, 28 seats in 28 wagons, okay. And out of them, how much are accommodated? 75%. So, if you have to find the vacant, so we know that this much seats are accommodated by 75%. So, I'll just write 75 by 100. Or you can also write it as 3 by 4 in a simpler form. Now, you can just cancel out everything and what you'll get is the number of vacant seats. Okay. So, it would be 588 seats. Okay. Not seats, 588 passengers. Sorry. Okay. 588 passengers would be there and after which 25% would be vacant and the remaining 75% would be filled. Okay. I hope that you understood this question very well because this is a very good question and uh, these kind of questions are very important in like names and all. Okay. Even in the pre, it is sometimes asked. Okay. And there is a very, very important question which is having its own type. So, you can consider it another uh, second type of question okay so what is the question the question says that the 14 2 by 7 percent 14 2 by 7 percent of cost of that item is decreased okay but because the cost has been increased the sales i'll write it like this i'll write it like this cost sales Okay, so if the cost has been decreased by 14 to by 2 by 7 percent, the sales has increased by 33 1 by 3 percent. Okay, as a result, how many percentage change in the daily sales? So, daily sales, now how much percentage change? Okay, you have to tell that. So, how do you do this? How do you approach these kind of questions? So, it is very easy. Okay, just know this trick or the way in a way it's not a trick, but it's a way how all these type of question so you know that the cost is 14 uh, 2 by 7 percent which is equal to 1 by 7 and this one is equal to 1 by 3 okay so if this is 1 by 7 that means earlier the cost would have been 7 and since it has been reduced it has been reduced by 1 okay by 1 which would be equal to 6 okay so i'll just write here cost uh, i'll just not write anything here the cost has been reduced like this okay and because of which the sales would have increased from 3 to 4. Okay, from here I have gathered this. So, earlier it would have been 7, 3 is a 21. And now it has reached 4, 6 is a 24. Okay, so that means there is an increase in the sale. How much has been increased? Okay, how much has been increased? There has been a plus 3 increase in the sale. So, there has been a 3 increase in the sale. On what? So on what? 21. Okay, so... It is equal to 1 by 7 and 1 by 7 is what fraction? There has been overall increase of 14 2 by 7 percent and there is an increase. So, you need to understand this also that there is an increase because you know in options what they ask is to decrease and to increase. So, you have to actually know that if it has been increased or decreased so that you can mark the correct answer. Okay. So, 14 2 by 7 increase in the sales. Okay. From earlier. 
I hope that this much is understood very well. So if it has been understood, we will be moving up to the next part of the question or the next type of the question. Okay. I think this is what you need to know because this kind, you know, this uh, the way I have solved the question, it is going to help you in solving many, many more questions. Okay. So, uh, like, I'll tell you another one. So, there has been successive discounts. One has been of 1 by 10, oh, sorry, 10% increase. Then it would have been 10% decrease. Then the cost of item would have remained same. Same, that means 1 by 10. Then there has been a 1 by, uh, how much is 1 by 20? There has been a 5% uh, of increase. That means 1 by 20 increase. Then there has been another 5% uh five percent of increase that is one by twenty increase okay so you can use this to find the overall successive increase so how you'll be doing this so i know that it has been increased from 10 to 11 then it is again 10 to 11 then it has remained the same so 10 to 10 only okay then um then it has gone to uh, from 20 it has increased to 21 and from 20 it has again increased to 21 okay Sorry, here it is 9. There are, it is a discount. Okay, so sorry, 9. Okay. So now what you have to do is whatever gets cancelled, just give it a cancel. And I think there is nothing else that get cancelled. So after this, you just find out if you multiply all of them, what is it, and then convert it into simpler form. Then you have to find how much change is there towards what it has been here. Let me write n here. So n upon my change, and you can right into 100 so you can just calculate the overall okay so this is a way you can actually solve these kind of question and it is also not very much time consuming because it is a very very easy way easy method to solve okay okay mm, what else you need to do There is a very good question, but I just currently couldn't find it in the written form. I'll just make sure I'll give it to you in the other uh, upcoming ones, okay? Currently, I'm not having the question. I'm just... But it's a very good question. I'll just keep it in the next class or whenever I'll get it, okay? Okay, so now let's moving on. Let's move on to another type of question. So we have a shopkeeper who purchases a few articles for rupees <laughs> 7, 3, Six four two. Okay, so this is the amount he purchases few articles, and he sold he sold how much two by five of them at thirteen percent profit. Okay, at thirteen percent profit, calculate the percentage profit at which he must sell the remaining. Remaining must be sold at which percentage profit so that overall he gains nineteen percent profit. Okay, so this is the question. So if he gains 19% profit overall. Okay, so how do we do this one? So I'll just show you. It's very easy and it's a type which is going to be helping you solving many different kinds of questions. Okay, and I'll tell you how. So first of all, as I told you that he sold 2 by 5 of the articles. Okay, that means 2 articles has been sold at 13% of profit. So here you can get easily 26% overall profit. Okay. In this case, the remaining, remaining is how much? Remaining is uh, 2 minus 5 is going to give you 3. So, 3 articles has been sold at how much? So, I'll just write X. So, that overall you'll get the price of 5 articles into 19. 95 is a 45 and it is equal to 95% of the profit. Okay. So, if you minus both of them, you'll get a value here, right? So, you'll get 69. So, how much uh, you have to multiply 3 to get 69? So, you'll multiply it by 20. So this 23% is going to be your answer. It is very simple. I hope you understood it very well. It's very easy and the technique is very easy. Just the question looks so disturbing but it's not. Okay. Okay. So uh, now we will be moving forward with our questions. Okay, and I keep on changing the colors as you guys can see so that it doesn't become a boring black and white lecture, which we of course don't know. You don't know, you don't want to 
attend that kind of lectures of course we all hate it so i have given i've tried to give certain colors but yeah you need to have a pen and paper to understand maths otherwise i would have added lots and lots of pictures to make you guys you know make it a happy learning but it's still a happy learning for sure okay so okay now moving on to the next kind of a question so these are like the test questions which are asked test question in the sense what i'm speaking is that there is a test which consists of 142 questions okay so there are 142 questions in a test and jassi has answered 40% okay of the first 71 questions that means of the first half of the questions correctly okay and he from the other half that means the remaining 71 questions uh, you have to tell that the remaining 71 questions he have to answer uh, how much percent he has to answer correctly so that he could get overall 60% in the exam so this is the question i hope you understood it well okay so as you know that if there are 142 questions and it has been given to us that it has been 71 has been done by the accuracy of 40% okay the remaining 71 needs to be done by how much percent okay so we just take the previous formula so in order to make it even more easier what you do is you create a ratio out of this so you will get what one ratio one for sure okay so you know that one part of the question has been answered with 40% accuracy the remaining part of the question needs to be under done with how much accuracy so that overall he get what he get 120 here he is getting 40 so of course here he need to get how much 80 okay so of course the value of x would be what 80% so if we have correctly answered the next 71 question with the accuracy of 80% so that you will be able to achieve the overall accuracy of 60% and could pass the exam okay now this particular ratio is what is going to play the game here in the question it might be any ratio like two ratio to whatever ratio in the world okay and you have to change these values accordingly the game lies in the ratio part here okay so i hope you understood it very well so now after this we'll be moving forward 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 okay with the next kind of a question next type of a question so these are like income expenditure questions very important always asked in the exam like the frequency the chances of asking it is like 100% always comes in the exam okay in either shift it comes so a man spends 75% of the income okay so income 75% of the income has been spent okay now if the expenditure or the spent or the value spent has been increased by how much has been increased by 20% then you have to uh, okay 20% and 10% 10% has been increased for what income or it is vice versa sorry i have read question just make it income here income here and expenditure here okay so expenditure has been increased by 10% income has been increased by 20% so you have to find the changes in the percentage of savings savings would have been increased or decreased by how much okay so this is the question so basically he has 75% of the income spent that means what is 75% 75% is 3 by 4 okay so that means income i'll just write it like this income expenditure and savings okay so if i look at the income here so income is 4 okay expenditure is 3 so how much would have been saving saving would have been of 1 only okay now he says that now the income has been increased by 20% okay so if i increase this with 20% so what i'll get is 80 okay if i increase this in expenditure with 10% what i get is 30 so how much would have been savings income minus expenditure would give you what would give you savings so it would be 50 so how much increase has been there from 1 to 50 how much increase so directly you can answer that there has been a 50% increase in the say so this is going to be your answer okay it happened to be that it is one here otherwise whatever it is you can just you know accordingly you can uh, make out the percentage i just wanted to tell you how to do this okay questions could vary there could be any values in the world okay but what we should know is the concept behind it if you know the concepts you will be able to actually you know go through the question and you know go to the nearest value and find the answer 
you can even come to the exact values. Okay, so now let's do another question. So I'm writing this with lots and lots of patience and everything, and I think the, my handwriting is also legible, so that you'll be able to understand. Okay, okay. so uh, let us say that a man is having a certain part of his income, okay, and he is saving his income to buy a car in the future okay so he says that he has to buy a car within one year so he has been saving certain amount from his income okay now you have to tell that what percent should increase his savings to buy the car if he has if he has changed the plans okay he has now he wants to buy a car in nine months instead of 12 months so how much percentage should be increased now the saving needs to be increased okay so how much percentage of saving needs to be increased so that he'll be able to achieve that particular target in nine months okay so what we have to do here now earlier we knew that he has to he has 12 months and he has been saving a certain amount okay now he has to do the same thing in nine months so he has to save a certain amount let it be y okay now if i cancel this out so you'll get here three you'll get here four so you get the value of x as three and y as four from here okay so we know that if x is three that means earlier he has been saving an amount of three and now he has been saving an amount of four so how much has increased one has increased and earlier it was three so it is actually 33 one by three percent that he has to increase in order to buy the car in nine I hope you understood it very well. It was an easy question, just the way I wanted to tell you that how you can go about the question. Okay, and these are the kinds of questions that are actually asked in prelims, and uh, many of the people get stuck if they don't know the concept. Okay, so I'll just create a space here for the next question. Okay, uh, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, so moving on, uh, a very, very important question again. Uh, the price of the sugar has been decreased by 30%. So price has been decreased by 30%. By how much percent should housewife reduce her, sorry, increase her consumption so that overall her expenditure on sugar is also reduced by 10%. Okay, so this is the question. So how do we solve this one? So what you have to do is you consider a value. Say earlier the sugar was of 100 rupees. Now if, 100, if 30 would have been decreased, so now sugar would have been of 70 rupees. Okay. So and if uh, if she has to increase reduce her expenditure by 10%, so means 90 rupees. So how much she should increase her consumption so that. Uh, she would get the desired amount. So, you will get here 20 by 70 into 100, which is equal to 2 by 7, which is in fraction equal to what? 28, 4 by 7. Okay. So, this is going to be your answer. Okay. So, I will keep the video till here today. Okay. And uh, um, certain things I wanted to tell you. First things first, that now the videos would be more regular because my laptop was having certain issue and I was not able to work up with the mic and there has been some latency in the laptop which has been now fixed so the videos would be more regular. Secondly, I will be covering up the topic of arithmetic regularly. Okay, regularly there would be a arithmetic lecture. Okay, thirdly, there would be like a alternate or maybe even regularly depending alternate or regular lectures of uh, general knowledge which is very very important now okay in all the fields okay fourth thing is that you guys can if you like the content just go and subscribe to the channel right now it gives me more, lots and lots of motivation to make more content for you guys and it, since it is completely free so i think you guys can just help a little by you know just contribute a little just by subscribing okay and you can leave a like for me if you understood it well if you have any doubts you can comment in the comment section below okay and if you uh, understood well and you like the video then you can share it with your friends and people who need it okay so thank you so much guys have a very very nice day and stay safe stay healthy and meet you in the next video bye